In order to activate the bucopharyngeal fascia, what you want to do is swallow. And when you swallow, your tongue is going to get stuck up against the roof of your mouth. Once your tongue is stuck up there, you want to maintain it up against the roof of your mouth. You don't want to let that muscle relax. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into our supine position. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Steven here with Team Euphoric, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to be your own therapist by demonstrating the top five Aldoa exercises for valgus knees. And before I actually get on with the exercises, I want to do a quick recap of what exactly valgus knees are and why exactly you should care. Whenever you hear the term valgus, that refers to a lateral force. So when you have valgus knees, that means that a lateral force is pushing your knees toward the midline and your knees are going to be closer together. This is commonly referred to as knock knees. And if you don't address this issue, it could lead to low back, hip, knee, and ankle pain. So it's definitely something that you would want to correct right away and in terms of a way that we can correct it one of the things that we could do is some strengthening exercises for the muscles that are responsible for laterally rotating and abducting the femur and the muscles on the medial aspect of the knee because those will often be taut and weak i already did those videos a few days ago i'm going to include a link right up over here to the top five strengthening exercises for valgus knees but in that video we ended up covering the gluteus medius muscle the gluteus minimus muscle the piriformis the vastus medialis and the semimembranosus strengthening exercises if you do those it will help tremendously to correct valgus knees and then once you've done those exercises the next thing that you could do is some myofascial stretching exercises for the muscles that are responsible for medially rotating and adducting the femur and the muscles that are on the lateral aspect of the knee we ended up covering those videos a couple days ago and i'm going to link right up over here to the top five myofascial stretching exercises for valgus knees let's say you've done the strengthening exercises and you've done the myofascial stretching exercises and you're still not seeing the results that you want to see well a third problem that can arise is you may not be getting adequate blood flow from the nerves that supply blood to the muscles that are responsible for laterally rotating the femur, abducting the femur, and also the muscles on the medial aspect of the knee. With regard to those muscles, the gluteus medius muscle is going to be innervated by the superior gluteal nerve, which is going to be your L4, L5, and S1 nerve roots. Same thing with the gluteus minimus muscle. So we want to do the aldoas for those specific segments. Then the piriformis muscle, that is going to be innervated by the nerve of the piriformis of the lumbosacral plexus, which is going to be your L5, S1, and S2 nerve roots. Then the vastus medialis, that's going to be innervated by the femoral nerve, which is going to be your L2, L3, and L4 nerve roots. And then lastly, your semimembranosus muscle is going to be innervated by the sciatic nerve, specifically the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve, which is going to be your L5, S1, and S2 nerve roots. So we're going to be doing today the Aldoa exercises for all of the Aldoas in those specific nerve root areas. We are going to be going through the S1, L2, S1, S2 Aldoa, the L5, S1 Aldoa, and then the the L4, L5, L3, L4, and L2, L3, Aldoa. But without further ado, here are the top five Aldoa exercises for valgus knees. The first Aldoa exercise for valgus knees is going to be the S1, S2, Aldoa. And for this one, we are going to be in a supine position, meaning we are laying down on our back. Before I actually get into the actual exercise, I just want to clarify one important part with this one, and that is the activation of the bucopharyngeal fascia. In order to activate the bucopharyngeal fascia, what you want to do is swallow. And when you swallow, your tongue is going to get stuck up against the roof of your mouth. Once your tongue is stuck up there, you want to maintain it up against the roof of your mouth. You don't want to let that muscle relax. But now that we got that out of the way, let's get into our supine position for the S1, S2 Aldoa. In terms of the hips, we are going to flex our hips and knees, and then we want our S2 supported on the ground. So the S2 is the second part of the sacrum. We're pressing that down into the ground. We have dorsiflexion of the ankles by pointing our heels toward our head. Then we have eversion of the ankles by pointing the soles of our feet away from each other. With our arms, we're going to reach inside of our thighs and grab a hold of our shins. And then from this position right over here, we want to maintain a neutral spine. So we have retroversion of pelvis, flat lumbar spine, and then we are going to slowly roll back until the base of the skull touches the ground. As soon as the base of the skull touches, we're going to lift our sacrum to the level of S1. So our S2 is elevated off the ground. Our S1 is pushing down into the ground. We want to maintain that retroversion of the pelvis, flat lumbar spine, flat thoracic, chin tucked in, crown of the way, eyes looking down at the floor to put the dura mater under tension. The S1, we're pushing down into the ground. The coccyx, we're pushing away from our body. The crown of the head is pushing away, so we're going in opposite directions. And then we want to activate the bucopharyngeal fascia by swallowing and letting our tongue get stuck against the roof of our mouth. And this is the S1, S2 Aldoa. Next, the second Aldoa exercise for valgus knees is going to be the L5, S1 Aldoa. For the L5, S1 Aldoa, we want to do this one either up against the wall. I'm going to be using some plyo boxes. If you don't have any of that, you can also do it with a partner. But if you have a wall, you want to get right up against the wall. And once again, we're in a supine position, meaning you're laying down on your back. 
from this position right over here, as soon as you get your butt right up against the wall, you want to go into maximum extension of the knees, so straighten them out as much as you can and try to get your heels away from the wall. From here, we want to go into pseudo inversion by going into dorsiflexion of the ankles and inversion of the ankles. So ankles pointing toward our head and the soles of our feet pointing toward each other. We're then going to go into in as much medial rotation of the femurs as possible without allowing the heels to touch. The heels are going to be in line with the ischial tuberosity. By the way, if you're not familiar where that is, one fist width apart is how far you want them. So get your toes almost touching each other. Then we want to maintain the retroversion of the pelvis, flat lumbar spine, flat thoracic, chin tuck in, crown of the hoi, eyes looking between our thighs to put the dura mater under tension. With the arms, we're going to go into maximum extension of elbow and wrist, maximum external rotation of shoulders. Bring our arms into the coronal plane by bringing the biceps in line with the ear. And then everything is pulling in opposite directions. So our heels are gliding up the wall, our, coccyx, our sacrum is pushing down into the floor, our coccyx is pushing into the wall, the crown of the head and our palms are pushing away from our body. And everything, you want to maintain all of these components. And this is the L5-S1 Aldoa. Next, the third Aldoa exercise for valgus knees is going to be the L4-L5 Aldoa. For the L4, L5, L doa, what we want is to get our heels in line with our ischial tuberosities. Once again, if you don't know where that is, make one fist that's roughly going to be the width of your ischial tuberosities. And then from here, we want to flex our knees to 90 degrees. Once we've flexed our knees, we want to go into dorsiflexion and eversion of the ankle. So dorsiflexion, point your toes toward your head. Eversion, you're going to point the soles of your feet away from each other. Then you're going to push your knees down toward the ground. Then you want to maintain retroversion of the pelvis by tucking your pelvis underneath you. We're going to maintain a flat lumbar spine, flat thoracic, chin tucked in, crown of the head up, eyes looking down at the floor to put the dura mater under tension. With the arms, maximum extension of elbow and wrist, maximum external rotation of shoulders. Get those arms in the coronal plane by having your biceps in line with your ear, push down with your knees, then with your chin, chin tucked in, crown of the head up, eyes looking down at the floor to put the dura mater under tension. And this is the L4, L5, L doa. Next. The fourth Eldoa exercise for valgus knees is going to be the L3, L4 Eldoa. For the L3, L4 Eldoa, it's essentially the exact same thing. The only difference is instead of one fist width apart, so in line with the ischial tuberosities, we want our heels as close as possible without touching. So we're just going to bring the heels close together, enough that you can slide a piece of paper in between them. Same thing though, dorsiflexion of ankles, eversion of ankles, push the knees down to the ground, retroversion of pelvis, flat lumbar spine, flat thoracic, chin tucked in, crown of the head up, eyes looking down at the floor to put the dura mater under tension with the arms, maximum extension of elbows and wrists, maximum external rotation of shoulders, flex the shoulders so that they're in line with the coronal plane, so biceps in line with the ear, push your knees down to the ground, and this is the L3, L4, L doa. Next. The fifth and final L-DOA exercise for valgus knees is going to be the L2, L3, L-DOA. For this one, we want to go ahead and straighten out our legs. We want to abduct our thighs to 45 degrees. From here, we want to get into maximum extension of the knees by straightening them out as much as possible. Then we want to go into pseudo-inversion of the ankles. What we're going to do, dorsiflex the ankles by pointing our toes toward our body. And then we want to go into inversion by pointing the soles of our feet toward each other. We're then going to go into maximum medial rotation of the femur by pointing the toes in toward each other. At the spine, retroversion of pelvis, flat lumbar spine, flat thoracic spine, chin tucked in, crown of the head up, eyes looking down at the floor to put the dura mater under tension with the arms, maximum extension of elbow and wrist, maximum external rotation of shoulders, and then flex the shoulders so they are in line with the coronal plane, so biceps in line with the ear. And this is the L2, L3, L doa. And there you have it. Those were the top five Aldoa exercises for valgus knees. If you have issues with regard to low back pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, or if you do have valgus knees, go ahead and give those exercises a try. And in terms of how to structure the program, the first thing you want to do is your strengthening exercises. Three sets of 50 repetitions of each of the strengthening exercises. The reason we're going so high with the repetitions, we're doing five zero, not one five, is because we're trying to elicit a postural change. Whenever we're trying to elicit a postural change, time under tension is going to be one of the most important things. So if we do the typical eight to 12 bodybuilding repetition rep range, we're we're not going to be able to accumulate enough time under tension. So three sets of 50 repetitions for each of the strengthening exercises. Once you've done, done those, then you're going to do the myofascial stretching exercises. You want to do three sets of 30 seconds on each side for each of the myofascial stretching exercises. And then lastly, once you've done the strengthening exercises and the myofascial stretching exercises, then you could do the Aldoa exercises. You want to do them for one minute in each of the postures. And that's one minute from the time that you get into the final posture, not one minute from the start time. So once you get into the final position, 
position of your Aldoa, time it for one minute, and then those are gonna be the progressions that you could do in terms of the actual programming. Go ahead, give them a try, and then if you guys have any questions with regard to any of the exercises that we just did, go ahead and ask your questions down in the comments section, and if you did try them, go ahead and let me know what you guys thought. Have you tried them? Are they working? Do you find that you're getting a little bit relief? Is your posture improving? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts, but that's pretty much it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to smash that like button so know to keep making these types of videos in the future. And if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as I will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.